Hi guys, my name is Henry Tenby and welcome to this edition of Model Moment. In this show, we're gonna be reviewing the model in front of me, which is a beautiful sheet metal representation of the Eritalia G222. Did I say that right, 222? Air transporter that was built in Italy in the 1980s. So let's get on with the model presentation. This is a sheet metal model, it's quite small. As you can see, it is very accurate and it's not painted. It's actually coated in sterling silver. So if you have a collection of sterling silver pots and pens and forks and knives, you know that it requires upkeep and you have to polish it. Well, this model is the same. You have to get your silver polish out because it oxidizes very quickly and turns dark black and brown. And I have just finished polishing this model moments before filming this video to give you that mirror-like finish that you can see on this model. This model is a fairly hard to find model. It's actually made by a company, an Italian company called Dita Ferra and they produced models for aircraft manufacturers back in the 70s and even back, back to the 1950s, I believe. The company still exists. Uh, you can find them on the internet, but they don't actually produce these models anymore, but they are major works of art. Have a look at that. It is super accurate. It's a hollow model. If you can have a look at the engine intakes, you can see, it might give you an indication of how yeah, you can see it's 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 all welded and soldered together and the shape is absolutely fantastic. There are etching lines where the flaps should be. I think you can see that on the tail there. And there's an underside view. There's some intakes here and here as well. So I'll just try and take the model off the stand so I can... Well, before we do that, let's, let's have a look at the dimensions of the model. It is, I'm going to guess, about seven or eight inches long. So here's my trusty ruler, and she measures up at about 10 inches nose to tail. And her wingspan is just under one foot. The props are made of brass. They turn nicely, but they have corroded, and I haven't been able to get them to polish up nicely as of yet. I was thinking of maybe painting them black because they look they look kind of gross in a dark corroded brass color. Now look at the stand. I'm going to take the model off of the stand so I can show you the stand. It is highly corroded. And you can see they've monogrammed that with Eritalia G22, but it, it's just not looking beautiful. And this has come loose. You can't really tighten it up more than that. So you kind of have to live with it as it is, but it is, it's definitely machined. It's, it's solid, it's all there. And uh, I have tried polishes. I've tried all sorts of things to get that to come clean. And it just doesn't, it just doesn't really wanna cooperate in that regard. But look at the model. Uh, look at the nose. Can you see how they've somehow burnished the cockpit window uh, features into the model, which is kind of cool. And you can see the mount right there. And then you can see how they've etched the flap tracks into it and the rear cargo door is the same as well. You can see how they've etched that in. Nice thing about this model, it is going to last for hundreds of years. Uh, in 500 years, if this model's taken care of, it's gonna look, it'll polish up just like this. Sterling silver uh, sets from, uh, you know, Edwardian England, or, you know, even the period of George III uh, or Charles II looks like this, it looks like the day it was made. And that is the beauty of metal and silver. It is forever, even a thousand years from now, this model will still exist. You can't, we can't say the same thing about a fiberglass model or a resin model because fiberglass and resin hasn't been around for a thousand years. We don't, we don't have the resume to support that on those products, but this model 
is forever. So Dita Farah has produced models, as I said, going back to the 1950s. They've done models of the BAC-111. I've seen Bristol Britannia. They're all about this size, actually, you know, roughly, you know, about a foot or under a foot long with similar wingspan. And they don't show up very often. It, some people would say it, it borders on the jewelry collecting market or figurine market as opposed to the aircraft display models. But I put it in aircraft display models because they are such nice works. They're so accurate and they were produced by the manufacturers. You can't get these models at your local store. You just can't go down to the store and buy these. Basically, I've been collecting for you know almost 40 years and I only have uh, two or three of these uh, Dita Ferra models in my collection. And it was only through a good friend of mine in Germany, uh, Andreas, uh, that I was actually, uh, you know, introduced to these to these models, and uh, and their beauty. But it's not something that you will see in North America. Um, they're really a European thing. So look at that. Look how nice that model is. It's just again, you don't have to be a lover of the G two two two. It's not it's not a, an overly popular aircraft, but it's the model making uh, capability. Uh, that I find so interesting. It's basically jeweler skill. If you look at the join line here of the wing fuselage, it's just so sharp, so sharp and accurate. So it's it's the quality of construction. It's the treatment of the windows, the how they've burnished the windows in. That's forever. That's not coming out. That's not a decal. They've actually uh, chemically treated the metal to burn in uh, those window markings that you see there. So it's it's really something quite special. And if you have any of these models, I'd love to I'd love to see what you've actually got. Now, if you'd like to learn more about Dita Ferra models, you'll read about Dita Ferra. They have a chapter, their own dedicated chapter in my book, which is the Aircraft Display Model Collector, Investor, and Appraisal Guide, which is 160 pages of detailed information on collecting professional aircraft display models, in which I talk about the values of these models and all the production. Uh, models of the main manufacturers over the past 60 to 70 years. You can purchase my book on my website, henrytenby.com, or you can get more information if you're so interested. So I hope you've enjoyed looking at this model with me. Do you have uh, a model by Dita Ferra? Are you lucky to have one of these in your collection? What type do you have? What do you think of this model? Do you think that these models are to be classified as travel agent or executive display models, or would you classify this as something different? Is it something you'd be interested in collecting or is it a little bit too eclectic for you? I'd love to see your comments in the comment section below. So if you've enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and I will look forward to seeing you on the next edition of Model Moment.